Hello everyone, it's Dawn here from Dawn's Inspirations. I've got another tutorial for you today. Um, this time I'm going to do an exploding box. Um, I had a request for this from one of my website followers. Uh, she'd seen a lady on the internet who did one, but she found the instruction not very easy to follow. Um, the lady was talking in Portuguese and she found um, the tutorial quite fast and she couldn't grab the measurements or anything. It was quite an intense um, tutorial so anyway I've had a look at it and she hasn't made it really very clear to follow I mean I had to look at it several times but I've d um, taken what she's done plus obviously I do have my own exploding box tutorial as well so I've sort of got the two together to try and put it across to you as clear as I possibly can so um, We'll go ahead and start and I'll make it with you step by step so I'm with you every step of the way so you can stop and start the video at any time. For the main box you're going to need um, four sheets of 12 by 12 cardstock. I've used different colours here today purely so I can show you the different layers of the box as we do it. Um, and then if you want to make the tags to go inside the little flaps you'll need some extra cardstock on top of that. Okay but there again that is optional. So we'll start off by making the outside cover. So we need to get uh, a piece of um, pattern, a piece of cardstock. This one's coordination, so I need to cut this um, 12 by 12 for this outside piece. So I'm just going to get my trimmer and trim off the border strip. Let me pull the arm of my uh, trimmer out here. So for the first sheet you need it 12 by 12. It's getting in the way of the uh, tripod um, leg as well, but uh, we'll do our best here. I'm trying to get the camera as close as possible so you can see. Okay, so that's our first sheet. This is going to be the outside piece of our exploding box. I'm trying to get my paper trimmer on there. Now with my scoreboard. If you haven't got a scoreboard you can use a ruler and an embossing tool that's quite all right okay so with the scoreboard we're going to score at four inches and eight inches quarter turn and do the same again four inches and eight inches now I do find with some of these card stocks that sometimes the paper does crack so I found it my little way of doing that is flip it over and score both sides because when paper is made it's it's put into a position that it doesn't want to move so by scoring both sides we're just getting the fibers to break down a bit so when we score or when we fold the paper it then doesn't crack so we need to do that and then i'm going to put my mat back on and we're just going to fold those score lines Those are good score down because this will help when you come to fold your box up at the end. This coordination is quite thick cardstock, um, so that's why I've used it for the outside box. But basil is quite alright as well, and so is the American Craft cards. You know, there's die cuts with a view, there's several brands out there. So as long as it's a sturdy cardstock, that will be fine. So we're going to just fold all these in on themselves and the next thing we need to do is we need to put a diagonal fold in here now obviously to try and do it on my score pal is not going to be very easy so I found by just using my ruler and going point to point and then I'm going to get a smaller embossing tool and just push that right down and we need to do that on all four corners so if you want to go ahead and do that Right, 
okay now these need to fold in on themselves so now we've scored them you need to just fold it in Maybe you can see what I'm doing there and with my bone folder burnish the fold down so I'll do it again with you you tease it in you can quite see that on camera then twist that round twist, tease it in and with the bone folder press it down the next one with you you can quite see what I'm doing there what I'm doing is I'm folding it in half folding it in half like that and then I'm laying it on the I'm laying it on the bench I'm fighting with it here I'm laying on the bench and then I'm just creasing that down so I'm just going to lay it on the bench and creasing that down so eventually you've done all your folds nicely your box will fold in on itself like that okay so the next step along the tutorial that the lady had seen um, she had got nice heart shapes in the corner I'm going to move on to another piece now just to show you she'd got nice heart shapes on the corner and I thought right how am I going to achieve these heart shapes so I'll show you what I've done here find my uh, pencil what I did was I got my ruler and pencil I went across the diagonal line so I'm going point to point so you've got the squares here and the diagonal and I'm going point to point okay so I've got obviously the little points there and then I'm marking the centre point okay and then obviously I'm kind of thinking right I've got to draw a heart out of this how am I going to do that and I look round for things and I'm just going to use the inside of my double sided tape and what I did was I measured I, I got it so I could see the point in the centre and the point at the side and then obviously I just moved it slightly so all I could see was cardstock and then I've drawn from the centre point right round to the outside point then I've done the same again on the other side so I'll bring that down excuse my head if it's in shot I'm just trying to line that up draw it round drawing a bit over there then get my scissors and we're going to cut that out now here's another trick that when you've done one now if you cut this out very carefully and try and do it in one piece this will help you with the other corners let me just try and do this so that's taken that's that's made a nice heart shape so what you can do on the other corners is rather than do the drawing again use the piece you've cut out which is your template hold it onto the corner line it up with your papers draw around it and if we draw around there you can then cut that out the same and it will match so as long as you cut your measure your first one draw around and cut nicely you can then use that as a template to cut the rest of them okay so that is your template so now you've got your box with folded heart shape middles to them I've got the sun streaming through at the moment which is nice through my craft room window I just hope it's not interfering with the, the filming too much so that's the your first page or your first layer of your exploding box okay now what I've done with this I've flipped it over 
and I've already started to stick on some pattern papers. So I've cut my pattern paper mats, I've got one missing here. Now each of these squares measures four by four. So I've cut my mats um, three and three quarters by three and three quarters. And this is out of a, um, a kit that I've used from Scrapbooking Kits or Us. Okay, so that's the, the, the paper I've used here today. And then what I've done is once I've cut my mats, I don't like white edges on cut out paper. So what I've done is I've used a pro marker. This one's called Antique Pink. And I've just edged all around my mats with the Antique Pink. So that just saves you inking. If you want to go ahead and use um, an ink pad, that's quite all right as well. There's not a problem there at all. So I'm just going to glue this last one on. Okay, so we pop that one on there. That's the last of the mat there. So that's the outside of our box. I'm going to flip it over and we're going to do something on the inside of the box here. Just looking for my, I'm just going to get my uh, messy craft mat here because we're going to do a bit of inking. Now obviously I wanted to do something in the corner here. Now you can stick paper but because this has got a shaped edge I thought right well, we'll have some some printing, some stamping. So I found uh, one of my nice big stamps here. So I'm going to stamp and use that. And today I've just got um, jet black stays on ink for that. So I'm just going to get that ink up all over. You can do any swirl you wish in the corner. As I say, you don't have to put anything at all. I just think it needed something to um, finish it off really that's why I'm doing it I'm trying to find my foam mats which I can't find that's another little trick if you've got a little mouse mat and pop that right underneath it just helps when you're stamping to get a better impression so I'm going to pop this into the corner press right down So we've got a nice little linked corner. So I'll just go ahead quickly and do that on the other corners with you. I mean, the feedback I've had from my followers is they do like the fact it's a step-by-step -step tutorial and they can do it with me. And obviously if you're a seasoned crafter and you feel more confident, you can fast forward on and get the measurements and see what I do. But I try to please people with the feedback that I'm getting. So, last two now. It just takes that plainness off that corner there, but as I say, you can use any stamps you've got at home. This is just a nice big one that I had here that I'm using today. One. Okay, so that's how the edges all stamp. I'll just put my ink pad away. I don't want that to uh, dry out. Move that all out the way. Right, so that's the edges now stamped. And now I'm going to go ahead and put the paper mats as well for here. Your paper mats are going to be the same for the inside as well. These are three and three quarter by three and three quarter. And again, I've edged all the edges with um, the same pro marker ink pad so I'm just uh, lining these up to where I'd like to have them I think I have the lines at the top so I'll just glue these down I'm using the Kal-El all-purpose glue here I think this is marvellous glue um, first of all you've got the bit of wiggle room 
which is nice when you're you're crafting. Um, another good thing is even if you're using really thin paper, I mean this is Prima paper that I'm using here today, but even if you're using really thin paper, um, it doesn't warp or buckle when you use it either, so it's absolutely marvellous for that. Um, another reason I also like it is if by mistake you do when you're wiggling about get a bit on your cardstock if you just rub it with your finger it comes away perfectly fine and also it does dry clear so it's a brilliant glue I mean I've since I started using it I tend to use this more than anything else so uh, absolute uh, brilliant product so that's now the inside of our box so that's the outside and the inside of the base of our box okay so what what we'll, next I think we'll go ahead and we'll do the lid of our box so you can see how the lid comes together using red cardstock again for the lid and this is measuring I think it's seven yes yeah, seven and a quarter by seven and a quarter and then if you get your score in again let's check them in camera shop there and we're going to score this at one and a half inches and five and three quarter inches do a quarter turn and the same again one and a half and five and three quarter I'm going to flip it over and do the same again just to stop the paper from cracking and then we're going to fold our score lines in I'm using the textured side of the paper for the outside of my box lid and the smooth bit for the inside of my box lid so burnish your folds down okay and then with a pair of scissors we're going to snip on the inside of each one so we're going to come down like that on one and then I'm just going to do cut a tiny little slither of a wedge out okay I'm going to do the same on this side I'm going to cut down the score line and then cut a tiny sliver of the wedge out I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to do the same again so cut down the score line and then a little wedge and then I'm going to cut down the center and then a little wedge okay so it will look like this when you've done it so you've cut the slits in each end and a tiny little taper wedge off this is so when we fold it in we've got nice corners so then we're going to put a bit of blob of glue on these four pieces here just move that round If you haven't got this glue you can use UPVA glue doesn't matter it's entirely up to you we're going to just hold those in place and then we're just going to let that glue take off so that now is the lid for our box so let's just bring our base of our box over and just see if it will uh, fit okay I've made it just slightly bigger because by the time we've got all these layers on I'm trying to hold it all together on my own and it's not comfortable I'm being a bit adventurous because the glue on this is still a bit wet I just want to confirm it's going to fit so that's your box lid on your box now I've got a nice deep side I'll show you what we're going to do with that in a little while I just want this glue to take off really so we'll let that glue dry okay we'll pop that to one side now we're going to start on the second layer of our box 
For the next layer of our exploding box, I'm going to use a pink um, cardstock here. I've got some basil here, and this is measuring uh, 11 and 3 quarters by 11 and 3 quarters. And then we're going to score that at 4 inches and at 7 and 3 quarter inches. So you need to go ahead and score at 4, right the way down to the bottom and 7 and 3 quarter. And I always like to do both sides. And then we're going to do a quarter turn and do the same. So that's 4 inches and 7 and 3 quarters. Do a turn. I'll see I've still got my label on there. I'll take that off. To cover that up. Okay. Now what you're going to do now is you're going to look for um, you need to have the piece that measures let me just double check this you need to have this measuring I can't see very well in this light that's four and that's four so that's going to be four and four and that's four and four right and then what we're going to do is we need to do a little quarter inch score line on three of on four of the corners so when we fold the um the squares in on themselves we've got a little gusset to take a tag okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to push my paper over to the right hand side of my score board because i find this is the easiest way to do it and i'm going to score a quarter of an inch down only to the first score line so you need to go a quarter of an inch down to the first score line. Then you're going to do a quarter turn and do the same again. A quarter of an inch down to the first score line. And then the same again. A quarter of an inch down to the first score line. And the last one. Now as you know I normally like to uh, do the other side of my uh, scores which I'm going to do but obviously when we flip it over you're going to have to then go to the left hand side which makes it slightly complicated but it's just the way I like to do things I find by scoring both sides as the cardstock as I've said in the past it just helps the cardstock not to crack when you're burnishing your folds because you're stretching the cardstock then both sides then I'm going to pop our mat back up and I'm now going to burnish these big score lines that we made. Okay, so burnish those. should have all those burnished down now before we cut our score lines before we fold our little score lines our quarter of an inch score lines we need to cut the paper so if you get yourself a big pair of um, scissors for this I find it's a bit easier than doing it on the trimmer and I don't know whether you can see on camera there if I do it in pencil there's the score lines we're going to cut this line here. So if I just pencil these in you'll be able to see these as we do them. So these dotted lines are my fold lines. Okay. So what we're going to do then is we're going to cut just there again down one of the squares that we folded. So you're just taking it down there. Okay, so when we folded that in, that's going to create our pocket. So go ahead and we do all four of those. Okay, so when you fold all these in, it's 
then going to look like that okay so now what we need to do is we need to burnish these fold lines now ready to take some tape so fold them over and burnish those down ready to take the tape okay I won't show you on all of those because I've got one I've prepared earlier now when you fold these over one thing I found was that these were measuring four inches now your red layer that we did the first layer that also measures four inches so to me when we make the third layer which we're going to put on top it doesn't quite lay so nicely so what I did with mine from this is I then trimmed off just a quarter of an inch so I made my, my each of my pockets measure three and three quarters just purely for you know I thought it looked better that way and also meant you could put a tab in the top as well but as we go along you'll see what I've done with that I did try making the square measuring that measurement but it didn't work because the fact it's a square it just wasn't wasn't happening for me so I've tried it several different ways and I found the best thing is to make it and then trim down to what you want but it's there again personal preference I'm just giving you the idea here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the one I made so far just so purely you're not watching me stick and fold paper so this is as far as I've got so I've stuck um, three of these down already now what I found to glue this I think best to use um, the red line tape the stronger tape on this so literally I put a little bit just along there on that quarter of an inch score line we had and then just along the bottom I'm going to do a little bead of my uh, PVA glue let's just do a little line just so when we put a tag in it doesn't fall out so pop that back in there going to take the uh, backing off this red tape and then we just fold that down so then that's all your pockets done so then you've got a proper pocket and as you can see what I've done with mine that's measuring three and three quarters so I did trim the top off mine so they lay nicely but you will see that as we go along <clears throat> now I've also put uh, the mats on this one ready <coughs> excuse me right I've cut out the mats here the mats to go on the inside here these are measuring three and a half by three and a half and what I've done with all my edges I've just used my pro marker just to go round the edge like we did on the last one okay rather than inking so let's get that last one glued down I did some of them earlier just because I don't think you really need to watch me and waste the time watching me glue all these things down so that's the last one there so this is the inside of the the second layer so if I just flip it over and show you the outside I've also put mats on the outside as well inked the edges again with the pro marker so let's just glue this last one down so that's that one okay so that's the outside that's the inside I've then gone ahead and cut some just out of some extra cardstock some little tags to go in here now this is the other thing if I'd left that four inches I wouldn't have been able to have my tag poking out the top because the other layer is four inches and that's why by cutting it down a bit it works so these mats measure three and three quarters by three and a half and then what I've done with these you've got to textured cardstock one side and then what I've done is I've put some um, pattern paper just on the other side here I seem to have lost one of my pattern mats so there it is there so we'll get that stuck on there so these make nice photo mats you can put journaling you can put anything on these 
and then these just pop into here already so let's just pop these in oh, that's gone right the way down so there we go so that now is the second layer of your your box okay so so far let's recap again so you've got one layer here that we've decorated both sides you've got your second layer then which we're going to glue onto there in a minute okay but as you can see by doing it like i have it um you've got that going to have that waterfall effect right we're going to go ahead now and make a third layer so again i'm going to do this in a different color for you just Right, the third layer we're going to use some blue cardstock for this one just so you see the different patterns that we're doing so you'll see the different layers with the different colours we need to cut this one 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches Let me get that piece of paper out of the way so 11 and a half By 11 and a half okay then we're going to get the score pal again take that off and this time we're going to score at half an inch and four inches so if you do half an inch and then four inches okay and then do a quarter turn and do half an inch and four inches quarter turn again half an inch four inches quarter turn again half an inch four inches so you should then have a nine square grid again with a half inch turn on each side now I like to just reinforce my folds as you know on both sides so I'm just going to go along and quickly do that it's my personal preference to stop my paper cracking but it's entirely up to you how confident you feel with the paper or cardstock you're using there again I'm using plain cardstock to make, make this box but if you've got a strong enough or a thick enough um, double-sided pattern paper you could use double-sided pattern paper you don't have to use plain cardstock and then decorate her afterwards it's entirely up to you so I'm just showing you how to make the box with the measurements but then going to go ahead and fold these big score lines one okay so your paper then will look like that so you've got your lines all folded but you've got this half an inch on the outside here so now what we need to do is we need to cut some of this off so we're going to start let's start on this top one up here so I'm going to do a cut line down here unfortunately I'm going to have to keep, keep twizzling it but if I cut a couple you'll see the pattern that it's going to take okay I'm just going to cut let me cut one off to show you I think it's the easiest thing because there's no easy way of doing this without keep twiddling the paper right so let me put that back at the top there okay so I've cut that little piece off that quarter of an inch off You've got a quarter of an inch at the top here, which I'm going to fold, burnish that down, and then that's going to be the flap that's then going to come over here. So this is going to be the folded line, so now we're going to cut this off. Okay, so we go in there. I'll just show you again. If I 
cut all these you'll see where we're where you're doing your cut lines last one So your paper should look like like this. So from the top there we folded that piece in but we've cut the rest of that off and we've cut down to the first line. Okay so then as you go round this fold line is going to come in. I'll just burnish that down. So I now need to put a cut line just in here not the easiest angle to do it I should have turned the paper really so that cut line goes there so that's then going to go over there so that's, that, that's going to then go over there so this one then is going to go over there so we fold this one okay and then this is the last one which I'm going to twizzle around to cut Okay, so that's going to get folded in and that's going to get twizzled round over there. Okay, so let me take these bits out of the way so you can see more clearly again. I'll just open it out so you can all double check and see that you've got it right. Okay, so you've got your cord from inch fold here, we cut the cord from inch strip off here and you've got a cut line down there. Okay, same again. You've got your fold here, but we've cut this strip off here and we've cut a line in here, so this then folds over here. We've cut the quarter of an inch off the bottom here, where my hand is, cut just to the first line there, folded that one in, and then that makes that pocket for you. So that's your three pockets, and then that one's your last pocket. Okay, so that's what it should look like when it's all opened up okay so now I'm going to go ahead and show you how we've decorated this there again you don't want to watch me decorating every piece so I've done three so I'm now going to do my last one I'm going to put some tape on there I'll find my thicker tape I did have a thicker red one I have yes here so let me put a piece of this thick red tape on here I just find put in the, the red line tape because this might be a box that is used quite a lot with people looking in it and at pictures and journaling etc. It's quite nice to have a stronger tape. You don't want to have some, make something and have it keep falling apart. So we're then going to put a bead of the UPVA along there. Take the uh, backing off this tape I'm going to fold that over and press that down now I've already gone ahead and decorated these bits so there again I've cut my paper, cut my mats and I've decorated around the edge I've cut these mats, these are a little bit smaller purely because the pattern paper I was using, it's the kit that I've got from Scrapbooking Kits or Us, which is our sister website. I'll put the details on the website for you with the measurements. Um, and it, of course with this band pattern here, it just looked nice. And of course, if I cut over it, it just wouldn't have fitted on, on the paper. So by cutting literally a strip of 12 inch paper down to four, I've managed to fit this on quite nicely so it saved quite a lot of paper but if you're not using 12 by 12 paper you haven't got to have that worry so much but I've made this out of um, one of the kits scrapbooking kits for us and I've made it purely out of the whole kit so I've used the kit for that so these are going to be the insides so on the back here we've got the outside I've done the same again use some of the bordered pattern paper to make my photo mats so we'll stick that one on there. Okay. And then I've done some of the tags to go inside. So there again I put 
the glue on the tags here. These are measuring the tags for this one are measuring three and three quarters by three and a quarter and then the little mat that goes on top measures three by three and a half. Okay, so I'll pop the glue on that. That's the last one of those. As I said, I'll put the glue on the plain side and then I've got the textured side there as well. Okay, and then I've got a little mat here as well. So I might put that one. This is the mat I've made to put our flower on for the middle. So I'm going to pop this in. I think I'm going to have this for the inside. Not the other way around, I said. So when you pop your tags in, as you can see, they sort of poke out the tops there. This is the mat that I'm going to put a flower on. I'm going to show you how to do that. So now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to get my hot glue gun warmed up. So we can then go ahead and get this all put together. So as you lay the pieces up, you'll see when I said earlier about I cut the pink one down slightly so it's stepped because if I hadn't I wouldn't have been able to have the tags. So once you bring everything together, I hope you can see it on camera there. A bit hard to do while it's not fixed. There you go. You see? That then fits on like that and then we made our lid which we're now going to decorate pop on the top. Okay, so we're now going to do the finishing touches to our exploding box. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get all these glued down. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to, I think, actually use some of this wet glue for this one. So this is my Kal -El All Purpose Glue. You can use PVA glue, you can use your hot glue gun. I've got my hot glue gun ready for my flower and my bow. So there's lots of glue on there and you need to try and line it up. The beauty about using a wet glue rather than double sided tape for this is you have got that little bit of wiggle room while you get it all central. So I'm going to push that down, I've moved that about a bit so let's make sure it's central again. Now that slid a bit. Right, I'm happy with that. Okay, and then this is the next layer some glue on the back of here. This glue does go off quite quickly, just takes a little bit of time. But we're going to leave this to glue while we decorate the lid of our box. Once I'm happy that that's in position. Yeah. So we'll leave that there just to set. Okay, I'm just wondering where I'm going to put that to set out the way so it's not going to get moved about too much. Let's move some of these bits over here. Right, so I'm going to set this to one side just so it can dry. And we're going to look at, um, I think what we'll do first of all is we'll get our, we'll get our flower made that's going to go inside the box. Now you know I had this red mat, but let me just show you. I made a red mat just to pop in there and then we're going to make a big flower to put on the inside here. Okay, move that back gingerly so it can dry. This mat is measuring three and a half by three and a quarter inches, so that then fits inside my box. Now I've used the tattered floral um, die for this and I've cut four out of the big flower to make this flower here today. So I've cut four of those. So I'm going to just turn my mat over so it's on the messy side. Okay, so that's on that side there. What I'm going to do now is I want to, I can find them, 
I put them aside, yeah, put them up here. I'm just going to ink those edges because I think it does look a bit better inked. I think for this, I'm going to use the um, vintage photo on here. Tim Holtz vintage photo. I'll store my pads at the, the bottom here. I think I need to get a new pad out. So I'm just going to put a little bit of ink just around the edges. Just to take that just cut look off there. I prefer to do that personally, but it's personal preference, it's entirely up to you. Okay. This is one of the splodge mats that you can get. If you put your ink on here, it does last a lot longer um, and doesn't dry out even with the lights that I'm using here today. So that's three. That's the fourth one. Okay, so that's that job done. Put that to one side. Right, the next thing I'm going to do, in fact I might do it on here rather than on my messy mat. Next thing I'm going to do is I've got a little bit of water in one of these mini misters and I'm just going to spray the flowers just a little bit because I find when making flowers we just spray them a bit with water it just helps the paper to be a bit more pliable and do what you want it to do. Okay, so that's the flowers. Then take them up there and then we can start assembling our flowers and making our big flower to go inside our project. Right, I'll just damp off some of this water so I can start with you on the first one. So the first one I'm going to use the blue at the bottom here and I can use this one. I'm just using an embossing tool but you can use anything that will sort of roll the corners of your that's not the best embossing tool to use on this. I think I'll go with the other one. Excuse me a moment, just find another one. Right, that's better. This one's a bit longer, so so just to sort of curl the paper round to make it look a bit more lifelike. So it's making it look a bit more like petals. So I'm going to just do that with the first one. Okay. Now the next one, one of these I'm going to cut and I'm going to cut two of the petals out of here. So I'm just going to go into the middle and I'm going to cut two of the petals. Okay. And then the other one, I think we'll go with this one, I'm going to cut one of the petals. Okay, so we've got a two and a one and they're already cut out, okay? So I'm going to then go ahead, I've done an extra flower here, often you didn't just do this with three but I've done it with um, four for this. So I'm going to curl this one as well. Just to make it look a bit more realistic. Okay, and you can just push it down, or if I get my big embossing tool, just go on the middle with my palm of my hand. Just to make that look round like that. I'm going to do the same with these. I'm going to curl these round. I'm curling under, but it's entirely up to you, but I find they, they are best curled under. For this particular flower it's just making a nice big dramatic flower that's going to be the center of our box so it could be a, a get well soon box it could be a happy birthday box it could be a deeper sympathy box it could be anything you wish really now i'm going to get some of the glue on here in fact i might use my hot glue gun because then it will dry more instantly so i'm going to put a bit of glue on here Then you're going to curl it round 
onto that other leaf and by using the hot blue gun it's more instant that's why I thought rather than the wet glue for this because I haven't really got the time to show you with the wet glue okay I'm just bending the flowers just back like that I'm going to do the same with the next one so smooth those right over I mean I'm doing this quite quickly today but you can take more time doing this for yourselves a lot of you may know this how to do this already so you don't really need to watch this part or you can decorate the box to how you want it's entirely up to you so just bring that that one round got a bit of wet glue on there okay that's your next layer let's do the same with these now before I do these I'm just going to snip straight across the bottom and get rid of these little bits because we won't need those okay do the same again curl the edges and the same with this one This one we're going to curl into a cone. Not very easy to see on camera. I'm just sort of manipulating that round there and then we can bend it over. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of wet glue just along the edge there. Put that round on itself. That's the beauty of using the hot glue gun. It can just dry very instantly and then I can, because we've used some water on the flowers, it's made the paper more pliable. So I can then bend those back and that looks more like the centre of a flower. And then with this last one we're going to curl this round. Do the same again. I'm going to put a tiny little bit of glue on there. It gets a little bit fiddly but it's worth just taking the time. I mean, I'm rushing this a bit today but when you're doing this at home you could take the time to do this. This is a job I normally do in front of the telly of an evening on my lap so uh, I'm not taking up too much time. What I'm going to do with this part is I'm going to pop it in there the opposite way round. Okay so I'm going to put a big blob of wet glue around the edge on the inside there and I'm going to pop that in so that can be drying so that's attached to that one okay and then we then need to put it into side this one here okay so I'm going to cut just a little bit more off the bottom of here because I think there's too much material you'll know as you do your flowers if you've got too much material on them or not or paper okay because you're not going to see that part of the flower so we've got the two there and I want to pop it inside this little one here. I'm going to offset it again. I'm just going to squeeze that in. Just so it all fits nicely. So I want to pop it inside to there. So I'm going to snip this bottom off here again on here. So it's made a hole in there. Probably not, still not big enough. Let me have a look, see what I think. No, I think that would be okay. So a bit of hot glue around the edge again. And pop that one in. Just make them off centre again because flowers aren't symmetrical as we know. Get rid of all these little twiddly bits of glue. Okay, so that's that one. And then we need to then put it inside this one here and then it's going to go inside that one. So I'm going to snip the bottom off this one as well. makes a hole in the bottom like that so this thing can slide in here okay put some glue around there that's it put that around there just hold that for a minute for the glue to take off 
okay you can always rebend your petals and that once the glue's taken off so don't worry and then we need to then attach it to here now okay so I'm going to just make sure this is bent in nicely I'm going to put a nice big blob of glue here and then I'm going to set that in there just hold that up for a minute while that takes okay I've made this out of the scraps of the pattern paper that I had um, left out of my kit you can use big flowers that you bought in a shop you haven't got to use um, ones you make yourself if you haven't got the tattered floral dye um, but you've got a Cricut machine the other way you can cut some flowers out is um, the Georgian Basic Shapes cartridge and there's a big flower here on the blackout um, that's got five petals and you can cut and use that as well and then that's quite a good size you could probably do that on about a two and a half or three inch size so that's another way and if not just free draw a flower and cut it out and do the same thing so if you haven't got any fancy machines or dies do it that way it doesn't stop you making your own flowers because you don't have you know these fancy gadgets so I'm just going to let that dry there so that's my flower now another thing you could do to put a bit of sparkle on your flower is put some mica powder in one of your mini misters and spray it um, or you could use some stickles as well which is another product so I'll show you in a minute so I'm now going to stick my mat on first I think so we're going to stick this onto here so I'll get that stuck down before we put the flower in so this mat's going to go on the centre there that just sort of finishes that off nicely and then what we're going to do is put the flower in the middle so there again I'm going to need a really big blob of hot glue on this I'm being quite generous because you know you take the time to make the product you don't or the project you don't want to be keep coming back and having to glue it as people look at it so there you go that's my flower now inside my exploding box okay so I'll set that to the side and now we're going to go ahead and we're going to decorate the um, the box lid okay so for the box lid that we made earlier we let the glue dry didn't we I've already got a mat that I've made to go on top of there which to me is still looking a little bit big I might cut that down a little bit more let me just measure that for you so my box lid measured four and a quarter by four and a quarter so really I should cut the lid down the mat down to four inches so I need a four inch square then it will be better so let me just cut two of these sides off because I just like a little bit of the colour card around the edge I just think it makes a nice finish on that so I'm just going to use my corner rounder around those other two edges and my Pro Marker pen just to go around the edges okay so I'll just finish that off let me look and see what that looks like now oh that's a lot better yes right so we get that glued on the top As I say, use the glue of your preference. I find the wet glue is better because you have that little bit of wiggle room. Okay, so that's my box lid. And then I've also cut some mats to go around the side of here just because I think it looks quite nice and finishes it off nicely. So these measured four inches, and I've done these by one and a quarter. I've rounded the edges off again and inked all the edges so I get those 
glued onto our lid. So just get those put on. And then I thought for the top, as we've got a flower inside the box, I thought we'd put a bow on the top. Now you can make a big bow just with some ribbon and pop on the top but I've actually made a paper bow out of the, the kit that I've already got so all the paper matches and it's all coordinating and what I did was I went on the internet and I put a search in for um, paper bow template and I came up with one, it was the die cuts with a view one and you just print it out and then you can cut around it and use that as a template and that's what I'm going to use to put on the box here so it comes like this so I've cut those bits out so it's die cuts with a view and it's called napkin ring bow template but it was perfect for what I want to use and I'll show you how we're going to put all this together I've done a double layered one okay so let me just show you how we're going to do this so with a pencil just round these pieces off. I've got a big one and a small one because I'm going to do a double layer. So that's one. And that's the second one. So this just makes them look a bit more bow-like. So just by rubbing the um, paper that helps. Now what these are going to do is going to tuck there and tuck there. Okay, so I'm going to use my hot glue gun for this again just because it's instant. So I'll put one down there and the other one. Just hold that for a minute. I've got a paper clip thing here so I'm going to pop that on there I would normally use a peg because I can get in but if I just pop that on there I'll we'll get the next one done so one on there and two on there just hold that still there for a minute And then these are going to go together. This one's still not quite dry, I'm being impatient now. So that's going to go together there, like a double bow. And then I made a little, cut a little strip out. So put a bit of the glue from here on there. I mean, I'd probably use wet glue and take my time with this, but as I say, for purposes of the filming I'm doing it like this with the glue gun today but if you're like me and can sometimes be a bit impatient the glue gun works just as well blob of glue on there just hold that for a minute so that will go on the on the top there and then I've cut two little tabs to also put on here so I'm going to just do those off centre Just cut those slightly off centre like that. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, I think you can. So there again, by using the pattern paper out of the kit, it all coordinates, which is quite nice. And then we just need to arrange all this on our box. Blob in the middle, get rid of all the strings, so that one can go there, and that one can go there. I'm just doing it off centre, you could do it square, it's entirely up to you. I'm making this one off centre. I'm going to put another big blob in the middle here and get to the end of my stick of glue. Push that down on there, just hold that for a minute. Just unplug my glue gun. Right, so that's the lid of our box. 
okay that should just be taken off now if you've got some little bits of glue that's showing just wipe them off not a problem So that's using the die cuts with a view, um, die cuts with a view template that you get free off the internet. But I can do a link there again on my website. So on the website dawnsinspirations.com, I'll put obviously the video will be on there, but I'll also put um, the measurements and the links to the sites I've used for like the bows. Okay, so I'm going to bring the box in because it should all be dry about now. Yeah. So I'll bring this all in, fold it all up, so there's my uh, exploding box, this is a request from one of the ladies from my website so I hope I've done a justice with the tutorial I do an exploding box but it's not quite as complicated as this it's a bit easier to do with the flaps and stuff but I'll put a paper bow on the top there again you can use a fabric bow as I said so not a problem I've used a kit from scrapbooking kits are us so let's use one whole kit to make the box so when you take the lid off it all opens out You've got your nice rounded corners that we stamped with the heart shape on them. You've got the first layer here with the tags inside here that come out. So you've got photo mats, journaling spots, places to put little tickets or receipts, anything you wish. So you've got lots of places here for photo mats. You've got the tags inside. You've got the next layer again with another tag inside here as well so you've got that on all four sides and you've got your little flower in the middle now that has stayed put and that's all done I mean and what you could do to finish that off as well you could just use some stickles just to put around the edge of that just to give it a bit of sparkle you could put little tags as I say it could be for a birthday it could be for a get well it could be for a deepest sympathy it could be for for anything really so the choice is yours I made that I made this one very feminine doesn't have to be a feminine project you could make it masculine for a man so you just use different papers and not put a flower inside you could put something else inside so you could even leave the inside blank and put a little gift like some chocolates or something so that's my take on an exploding box and I hope it's been helpful for the uh, lady that emailed me in on my website and that she likes the tutorial and she finds it easy to follow so if you'd like the instructions and measurements go to my website dawnsinspirations.com thank you very much for watching and please leave some comments because i'd love to see what you think about it thank you very much for watching it's dawn here from dawn's inspirations bye bye